And there's other people that are fed up, they're tired, they're done, they, they, they're not fulfilled in their relationship, they're not fulfilled here, they're not, there's all kinds of reasons. Now, I'm absolutely certain that I've seen this. I've seen it so many times I don't question it. I know that our unconscious values create our realities. Mm -hmm. And I am certain, I've seen it over and over again, people have diseases sometimes for a motive. Now, Athena had... Because that's my next question. That's the next question, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. I watched her. Now, this is something that probably is going to shock people. Mm -hmm. But I sat with her when she was with, visiting her mother in Melbourne, who was elderly. And I watched her watch her mother, who was uh, in a little retirement house, a little retirement uh, community. I watched her laying on this little bed, and she was um, kind of, I would have to say, she was kind of shriveled a little bit, and she was aging and things. And I saw Athena's face look at that. And she got a watery eye, and she says, this is not how I want to go. And I looked at her, and I said, what, what are you experiencing? And she says, this is not how I want to be. This is not, Athena Star Woman is not going to pass in that form. She says, I want to die beautiful. When I go, I want to still have my beauty, my youth, my life. And she says, I don't want to go past 60. Now, I remember her saying that. Her friends have seen her say that. And all I know is that she was 59 and a half when she passed. And she never asked for treatment even though that by the time they found out about it, they, was, they said it was too late anyway, because they did metastases to a bunch of areas. So when she said that, it was almost like there's a part of her that honored that. And I almost think that she wanted to remember it as a beautiful woman, and by God, she was a beautiful woman right to the time she passed. And not everybody could comprehend that, except the closest people that knew her comprehended that. And even though there were moments when she really had a challenge facing that, I really believe inside that there was a part of her that was ready to move on. And she actually had, once she had that realization, she kind of say, well, let's have euthanasia kind of thing. She would say, let's, you know, why do I need to drag this thing out? Let's just allow it. I don't think she had as much of a fear of death as some people would have. I think she understood metaphysically what was life and death. And, and she said to me one time, we were sitting in our penthouse in uh, Aria in uh, the main beach. And we were having a night. The doctor was there. And we were holding hands and talking to each other. And she said something. And it was really inspiring. She says, we've traveled the world. We've met royalty. We've lived on yachts. We've had penthouses. We've had wealth. We've met amazing people. We've been in the movies. We've done things. And uh, she's an extraordinary woman. She's touched millions of people's lives. She says, I've lived an amazing life. I feel grateful for my life. And I'm grateful that I found my star man, as she called it. And, and so I think that, you know, she was literally thinking, I'm grateful for this experience, even though she was challenged and even though it was not easy and it was some pain in, involved when she was going, it wasn't an easy project, but she did it with grace. And she had some moments when she would uh, react, but, um, and I remember asking her, how do you want me to respond to this? Mm -hmm. You know, because there was, there was uh, some people, even in the family dynamic, that, that wanted to rescue her and save her and everything else. And she says, no, I wanna, I wanna allow myself to go and she asked it to be quiet. She didn't want media around it. She wanted it to be completely silent. Didn't want anybody to know about it. It only got out just days before she was passing. And she wanted to just pass and be on it that way. And it was really challenging to, to keep that quiet. But at the same time, I had to honor that because that was her will. How was it for you? Well, Are I had... You know and honoring your wife's... Well, that was challenging at times. Um, it was interesting. I was in... Uh, I wasn't there every day. In fact, she, I could go on, it's a long story, but it's a, I had to travel too and do my seminars and things during part of that. And I was in, I believe, Dallas, Texas, and we would chat at night on the telephone. And I knew it was getting close, and I knew I was going to be coming back to, to Australia. And um, she said to me, she says, I don't know when I'm going to be passing. I know it's coming soon. And she says, but I want you to do, there's three people in my mind that I want to make sure you say something to and share something with, you know, before, if I don't get to. And she told me this in a, I guess you could say it, I don't know how to describe it, but a telepathic kind of connection. Because it was, I talked to her on the phone, I went to bed, it's two o'clock in the morning, I was awoken at two o'clock in the morning, and there she was in my mind. It was vivid, I was in a, a dream or whatever. And she was communicating, she says, I want you to tell these three people these three things. And 
I, it was vivid. It was so vivid that I knew who it was and what it was to say. And I think that she didn't want them to know and she, because she didn't want to have media and stuff. But at the same time, she wanted them to know after it passed. Well, on the, pa the day of the passing, literally that next, within 24 hours, those three people contacted. And I, I it was really spooky because it's almost like out of the people that contacted, those three people contacted and I said what she asked me to say. So she definitely had, there's no doubt about that Athena had an intuitive and a psychic ability. There's no doubt in my mind. She, she played it down sometimes and other times she built it up, but the reality is she had an intuitive something and uh, it was pretty mysterious. And we had that interaction. We, had, we could be distant and we have a connection that was kind of a non-local telepathic communication. And uh, so, yeah, she was an amazing person, but I, I really believe that she honored the idea of passing and that she had some challenges, but at the same time, she also knew that that was the, that was the passing, that was the destiny. I think she wanted to make sure she was beautiful before she passed. Wow. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. We're going to take another break and we'll come back and hear more about John's journey. Stay with us. <laughs> 